Welcome to the DEF CON tutorial. You move your viewpoint by moving the mouse cursor to the edge of the screen. Uh, highlighted missile silo. ICBM launch mode. It fires nukes at enemy targets. I like that. Kaboom! Oh, we just launched a random nuke into the middle of Kiev. That was a warning shot. That was a warning nuke. So let's throw a silo there and there and I don't know. Here. Any submarines have launched a nuke in one of your cities. Your silos are already in aircraft defense mode. I don't have any silos that are nearby though is the problem. Oh, uh, yeah, my bad, London. London, uh, oh man, 10.6 million have died. That is, uh, that is bad. God, this music is, it's like Blade Runner meets Terminator 2. It is horrifyingly scary. Luke launch is detected. Nuke launch is detected. Guys, shoot this, guys, there we go. Gotta shoot this shit down, guys. We cannot have nukes killing our people. Let's see what those those Russians are up to. You can never trust a Russian. It's a personal credo of mine. Deploy some silos? I'll put more silos there, I guess? Okay. Well, look at our radar. People. Interesting. People glow a lot, I guess. DEFCON 1 is coming, man. It's time for all-out global thermonuclear war. The very thing Ozymandias was trying to protect us from in, in Watchmen. Oh man, here we go. <laughs> Kinda nervous. I can't stop them all, can you? Kaboom! Oh, not only did we destroy the silo, but we're sending in a few victory nukes. Kaboom! Airbase destroyed. Mission 3 complete. Send a few more. Let's see what's over there. It's a lot of nothing. I'm pretty sure I nuked all this. I'm pretty sure they have nothing left, so. Oh, look at this! Look at this! We are scouting. It's very satisfying to watch these bubbles converge on one another for some reason. Look at that. Defcon 1. Not much has changed. Launch, launch them all. Oh, one of my ships, one of my planes got destroyed. All right, what's going on down here? Oh, these guys have, have similarly encountered. Oh, I guess you don't have to like click. It'll just do it by itself. I like that it's a very hands-off combat kind of game. I wonder if you were a flat earther, how you'd feel about a game like this. Like, are you just constantly offended at the representation of the world as a globe? Wait, in this case, the Pacific Ocean is a crucial battleground. The enemy has postponed... Oh, shoot, what the heck is happening? This is the fastest speed, by the way. Look at how slow these ships... This is the fastest these ships can go. I wonder how accurate these world populations are. Like, is that right? 10.7, were, were there over 10.7 million people in Bombay, or is it always higher than that? New York is 26 million, is that right? Okay, I assume they're gonna destroy the enemy subs there? Seriously, are they even gonna bother attacking the enemies? I guess we destroyed those subs, I didn't even notice combat. But I guess they're done. Man, we decimated Asia, man. I like how it includes all of North America, but like, there, are, there's literally not a single target in Canada. Because nobody wants to hurt the good old Canadians. What the hell is N York City? There's New York and N York. Is that mis is, is that a mislabeled Toronto? Uh oh, out of range. So I guess all you can do in the early stages is like wait for incredibly slow ships to move around the world. So I can't fly any fighters over to the enemy because this is way too far. I should have put like one airbase way up here. Oh, it's a battle. American forces engage with the Chinese military in the South Pacific. Oh, well, they're wiping some of my stuff out. That sucks. Oh, there's there's bombers coming in. Oh, what, what is this? Oh, there's, there's quite the engagement going on there. All right, DEFCON 1. This is it. This is what we were training for, for 20 minutes. Time to launch some nukes. We're just going all offense on this one. We haven't even formally declared war, I don't think, on Asia, but like, look at all these nukes that are like, uh, heading right for them. We've totally also revealed our position for every single silo. We're kind of the shoot from the hip kind of leader. Act first and think later, if you know what I mean. Oh, look, we haven't been shot down yet. Oh, they're trying though. Oh, they shot us down, uh-oh. Oh, we hit Beijing. We're kind of, we're just trying to overwhelm them, essentially. There's too many missiles, they can't shoot them all down. It's a cornucopia of violence. It's the end of the world, my friends. Oh, and they, they are actually shooting at us, too. They are, they're gonna, they, oh shoot. See, this is the problem. I sent all my fleet over on the offense. I have nothing on the defense. It does not bode well for us. Oh, but I think we're getting them. 
We're, yeah, we're losing San Francisco, LA, Texas. Okay, it's getting worse. Vancouver was hit too. I'm out of, oh, you can be like out of nukes. Where's that nuke going? I wonder. Okay, we are out of ICBMs. It's time to launch all the bombers. <laughs> I like how they're like, the enemy has launched most of its missiles now. Use your grand styles and remaining nukes to launch a full scale retaliation. That was my strategy from the get go. I didn't know we were supposed to wait until they had fired theirs. Oh, look. Oh, no, there's. There's bombs and stuff coming. Uh-oh. I didn't know that they could launch planes at us from this side of the planet. I think I built a little radar dish up here in Canada. Good old Canadians to the rescue. Like always. Oh, they hit us with the nuke again. Come on, you only have 15 minutes left. Wipe oh, oh, right. They, yeah, right, right, right. They have fighters and stuff. I did not anticipate being shot down, so I guess my little doom fleet of bombers failed. Mission complete, though. Congratulations, you successfully defeated the AI. I killed 55 million people, and I only lost 30 million. And I guess I have more nukes. Whatever, I won. <laughs>
nuclear silos have a dual function of both shooting down enemy nukes that are incoming and, of course, launching um, launching nukes at your opponent. So I'm going to put most of my most of my silos kind of in the most populated areas because I want to protect my cities. So I guess me, like, uh, no, I want to put one here. I was going to say maybe I'll put one here to protect India, but, like, honestly, like, there's a lot more going on around here. I feel like we need more protection here. Sorry, India. And then, uh, Tehran. Oh, wait, we have two more silos. Okay, you know what? India will get one. India can have nukes, I guess. And we'll put one more... Uh, maybe... Maybe there. Okay, there we go. So we have some nukes. Um, you also need air bases. Um, I'm gonna put one air base here. Air bases are really good for scouting the enemy, so it's actually not bad to have them on the front line, as I learned in the tutorial that I played before I just started to start making this uh, video. I put all my air bases sort of behind the front lines, and as a result, they were kind of useless to me. Um, we'll put one over here, because air bases can also help shoot down things that are coming. Now you have radar. Radar helps you actually see. So you definitely want radar in key positions so that you can see incoming um, nukes and stuff and shoot them down with time to spare. So radar is definitely important. Um, let's see. This is pretty good. We're going to be able to see lots of the enemy. I, I feel like my enemy is going to be yellow, which is Russia. Um, should put one, put one there. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, how about one, can we go into Tokyo? Yeah, there we go, oh yeah, there we go. Now we can really see what's going on. And we'll put our last one, where do you guys think? Um, how about one like right here? Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, oh, we're at DEF CON 4, oh no wait, DEF CON 4 is in two, two minutes, okay, yeah. So DEF CON 5, you're just placing things. DEF CON 4, you finally, you can start moving out and stuff like that. Um, or I guess DEF CON, Five is only placing structures. DEFCON 4 will start placing units. DEFCON 3, we can start engaging with fleets and stuff. DEFCON 2 is the same as DEFCON 1, or sorry, two, 3, where you just engage with units. And DEFCON 1 is where the nukes break out, and then all hell breaks loose. And it's actually pretty terrifying. You just watch your country get annihilated. The goal of the game is to basically not get as annihilated as your opponents. So everyone's going to get annihilated. It's just to what degree you're going to get annihilated is basically the question. Um, Def like we can't even use our fighter bases until DEFCON 3. So the world is at peace, which is kind of a boring phase of the world to be in. Um, this game though is a really interesting, unique take on uh, the RTS genre. Like it's, it's unlike any real-time strategy game I've ever heard of. I was super intrigued when I read about this in the book and was really looking forward to trying it. Um, you know, you, you, see nuclear war in video games not infrequently uh but actually depicting it is infrequent like the same with like movies and stuff like terminator uh has nuclear war in it but just as like the backdrop that's the whole you know the thing they're all trying to avoid um in watchmen ozymandias is trying to avoid nuclear war trying to prevent the world from from basically doing just this from playing a game of defcon um, in Fallout, the nuclear war has already occurred, and that has sort of irradiated the world and left the world in a very uh, terrible position and so on and so forth. So nuclear war is not something that's infrequent in video games, but it's not something that is typically depicted in games or movies. Um, I like it when you look at population, like Canada doesn't even register. Like, it's like there's just no people in Canada. What are we, androids? We're people too, damn it. Guess there's not enough of us to count. I like how people in this game are like seemingly give off like ambient light that is colored. It's like Christmas trees. Okay, we are now at DEFCOM 4. At DEFCOM 4, we can start placing units, I believe. Yes, we can. We can place ships. Okay, so let's build up some fleets. So you have battleships, which obviously uh, can battle stuff. You also... Uh, have subs which are really tricky these things can launch nukes of their own so subs are pretty pretty crazy so one of the things about this game is that um, you every time you launch a nuke from one of your silos you give away the position of that nuke 
of that silo. And, and other enemies will now know that they can nuke you over there. Like, look, we can see uh, stuff here because of this radar dish. This radar dish is basically letting us see those buildings. But they could have nuked stuff up here and we wouldn't know where it, that it was up there. But if they fire a nuke from up here, then we would know. So it's like once you reveal the location of your silos, kind of the jig is up. And then the enemies are going to start attacking you. But with submarines, it's like nobody knows where your subs are. Like you can move them around and stuff. So like subs are, are very important strategically. Um, on the flip side, let's just split our fleets pretty. Actually, I'm going to put more fleets here because I feel like this is a hot combat zone. We're going to have America, Russia, and me vying for control. Where's this? This entire ocean is just going to be... Oh, shoot, there's battleships there? Okay, let's put put one more uh, fleet in here. Uh, we'll, uh, this will be a hot combat zone, though. You know what? We'll take our chances. We'll take our chances uh, down here. I feel like that could be a total mistake. But it's interesting how they make Africa and South America like nuclear powers in this game. It's sort of like... Like, in, in reality, the, the major superpowers have always been North America, Europe, uh, Russia, and Asia. Those are the powers that have large armies, stockpiles of nukes and that kind of stuff, space agencies, all that. Like, Africa, even at its best, it could not feel like a global army that would be formidable. Same with South America. Like, there's, they're just, there's too many divided countries. They don't have enough, uh, you know, manufacturing capabilities, etc., etc. But... In games like this or like Risk, you know, South America and Africa are like really powerful in Risk. It's interesting because it's sort of like they just look at the landmass. They're like, oh, it's a pretty big landmass. Sure, I guess I guess it's powerful. But like in reality, um, it doesn't have the like industry or like the the social stability to be um, powerful enough. Um, can we send these guys somewhere? Can they move? Okay, we can move these guys. Wait, have I not? If you don't place stuff. By the time a DEFCOM runs out, you just, like, lose that stuff. Okay, we are going to... We're going to send some subs down here. We're going to try, like, nuking America over here if we can. And we're going to leave all of these guys basically on defense mode. Just protect our cities. And you can go into, like, anti-sub mode and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, now, where are these subs going to go? You know what? We're going, we're gonna go way up there, man. Let's see if this this works. The, the ships in this game move incredibly slow. They're like turtles. Like we can accelerate time here and we'll see that things are still moving like incredibly slow. Uh oh, is, are they gonna fight us? Are they fighting us? What's happening here? Oh, we're getting into a battle. We're totally getting into a battle. Um, hold on, move over here here so that we can have the cover of this base that will be helpful to us oh we're in defcon 2 mode by the way which means these guys are going into anti-sub mode we don't want any subs slipping by oops these guys are going over here and these guys no no anti-submarine mode man okay now, we can start scouting around with these little jets, see what's going on. So here's where the action begins, guys. <laughs> I feel like this is, is like a bureaucratic representation of nuclear war. I mean, it's, it's very accurate. At the same time, it's sort of a little... I don't know what the word is. Like, it's... Oh, they have uh, they have missile bases over here and stuff too, right? Eh? Like they're firing their own missiles at us. Interesting. Oh shoot, they're totally shooting us down. No, wait, go back. Damn it. No, wait, I cancel your orders. Okay, well, those guys, those guys got got shot down, man. That was not cool. Um, oh man, there's a huge engagement over there. What did I tell you? I knew that was gonna be a thing. Where are my subs? You know what I want my subs to do? I've decided actually they're gonna launch nukes at these bases because I don't want to reveal where my nukes are I want to like nuke them with my subs so I guess we're fighting Russia I guess it's it's Jay versus the Russians Asia versus Russia who will win 
DEFCON 1. Alright, here's where the nukes begin, guys. Now, we could launch out of our silos, but again, I don't want to give up the position of the silos. So instead... Oh, wait. Are my subs getting destroyed? Oh, God! My subs are getting destroyed! Wait! Get out of... Get, oh, God! Oh, my God. Okay, this is this is turning out really bad. I thought it was just J versus the Russians. It turns out it's J versus all these, these enemies. Damn it. And, hey, these guys are still alive. You know what? Let's go ahead and nuke some stuff here. And we'll do this. Boom, there we go. Alright, so our subs are performing a sneak attack on the blue team. Sorry, blue guy. Sorry, Africa. I didn't want to attack you. I wanted to attack Russia, but... It turns out that the Russian guys suck. So we're going to do this. This. We're going to reveal one of our silos in an attempt to nuke them while they're busy shooting bombers and stuff. Uh, we're going to launch bombers. Oh god, La nuclear launches detected, guys. All hell has broken loose. Bomber launch. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's there's nukes over there, too. Oh god, they're they're just launching everything. They don't care. They do not care. All right, fine. Well, if you don't care, neither do we. Let's do it. ICBM launch. Launch them all. Oh god. Okay, there. I'm I'm getting nuked, guys. <laughs> this is not what I wanted to have happen. But yeah, this this is basically what happened in real nuclear war. We would all get wiped out. Oh, there it goes. Oh, look at all these nukes. There's like a billion of them landing in my silos. Oh my god. Oh no, the glorious Republic of Jtopia. No, it's getting, it's kind of getting wiped out. Um, okay. My, the best laid plans of mice and men, am I right, guys? Whew, I, I think we might have maybe wiped out one or two of their silos, but we are definitely getting pummeled here. Uh, maybe I could launch some bombers this way. So this is the first time I've ever played this game. The first time anyone plays at nuclear war, they tend to lose the war. I'm pretty sure that is like a well-known fact. Oh, I still have a silo here. Hong Kong's been hit. <laughs> All my territories are getting wiped out, man. This sucks. Uh, we're just going to try and like wipe out as much as we can. So, I mean, you do want to go for, like, civilian targets. You get more points for killing people. Bombay hit 2.1 million dead. Oh, God. This is... Listen to the music in the background, too. Is this not terrifying? Like, if you woke up and you just saw this on the news, you would literally just... I, I don't know what you would do. But you would be horrified and terrified, and you would just... I don't know... I don't even no, no there's no words guys no words oh god nukes are coming out of everywhere everywhere you see the symbol nuke has been launched we are boned we have nothing left we can maybe try and fight them in a good old fashioned naval encounter but that's about all we got yeah they just wait they are subsurfaced and it was immediately destroyed um, we're in a lot of trouble I don't seem to have very much left I have this Launch some fighters of this guy. All oh, the fighters take out that one ship because we hate him. Because I'm pretty sure he bombed one of our cities. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I have no nukes left. When you have no nukes left, you pretty much just sit around and wait for the others to get tired of killing each other, and then that's that. So this game is totally based on timing. So you see why like there's no resource collection, there's no tech tree, there's no nothing, because all that happens in this game is literally everyone dies and it's a timed game so once all the nukes and stuff are done then there's like a timer and once the timer is done then you just count up how many people have died and you see who who won and that's basically how this game is played um oh we're getting bombed by the blue guy too now i guess everyone hates me i was not a very a very good person though in this game i i kind of first struck at uh russia there tried to wipe them off the face of the earth for no real reason the glorious land of new players under attack by the notorious player two and player three. Also player one. They all kind of teamed up on me. This, this was not really a fair engagement. I have one heroic battleship trying to take on two. That's not going to end well. Um, this game, by the way, if you play it in real time mode, takes about eight hours. 
So again, there's no resource collection, there's no tech trees and stuff, because the idea is that if nuclear war were to break out, after about eight hours, pretty much everyone would be wiped out. And the world would be irradiated, there'd be more, no more nuclear silos or bases or anything. Like, this is what would happen. Um, and we have no more ICBMs left. Yeah, we're just, we're just done. Like, every, like, everyone is gone. Everyone has been wiped out. Just send some fighters, some bombers. It's all we have left. How many? 7.4 million people dead. 3.5 million people dead. How many people are left alive? Two point, like, all my cities got nuked. This is crazy. Um, anyway, you can play this in what's called office mode. In office mode, the way it works is the game takes eight hours to play. And you play it in real time. And so when you issue an order, you know, you issue this bomber to go bomb like Russia. It could take four hours to fly over there. And so basically you could issue your orders and you could go away, have lunch, work in the morning, come back, you know, after work and check to see what's going on. And if you're playing this over LAN with other people in your office, this could be like a fun way to sort of casually kill some time here and there through the day. Although when you are playing in office mode, you can minimize this game and it will just give you updates through like an icon in the system tray. It kind of reminds me of old boss keys. Like for any of you guys, uh, victory to player one, damn it. For any guys who played DOS games way back in the day, there was always a boss key, or there typically was, where you could press a button, and all of a sudden the game would bring up a fake spreadsheet, so if your boss walked in, they would think you're actually working. I feel like the office mode of this game is like, it harkens back to like, uh, boss keys, where you can have this game running in the background, play it all day at work with your friends, and the boss is never the wiser. Anyway, let's take a quick look here at what happened. My sc oh! <laughs> My score was negative 61! I only killed 8 million people, and 77 million people died in my country. You know what? Some may say that's a bad score, but I say that the, I was a responsible leader. I didn't want to wipe out the rest of the world. I literally, the thought of nuclear, the thought of global thermonuclear extinction made me sick. And I thought, even if my country goes down, I don't want all of humanity to. So I maintain that I intentionally threw this game with a score of negative 61. Uh, the green player, North America, he was a freaking monster. He killed 158 million people, and about 70 million of his people died. There's about 31 million survivors. I'm, I'm up there, man. I mean, the yellow player technically has fewer survivors than me. What, because yellow killed more people, suddenly they're better? I think I did okay. I'm third in terms of survivors. And guess what? The glorious land of new player is very good at rebuilding from the ashes, so... Um, this game is a prequel to Fallout. After you lose the game, then you go and you just play an intense game of Fallout 1, 2, and 3 back-to-back. -back. Um, and that's it! I think! I think there's there's nothing left to do. I can turn territories on and off. Uh, I guess you press escape, and then you leave the game, and then you go and you contemplate the, you know, triviality of our existence and just how quickly the entire world can be wiped out through global nuclear ex extermination. And that's it! That's DEFCON, everybody! Wow, what a dark... What a dark game. Um, it felt like playing like a, an enhanced board game, I gotta say. It's one of those games that like, it, it, it's meant to be played in about 20 minutes to 40 minutes. And like you sit down and it's, it's not that different every time. There's not like a lot to explore. Like again, there's no tech tree or like building or anything like that. The strategies are particularly simple. But I definitely you can get better at this. And one of the fun things about this game by the way, are alliances. So if you are playing with friends and stuff, you can form alliances with them where you decide like you won't attack each other and stuff. But in this game, only one person can win. Obviously, alliances get broken all the time. And actually, the devs intentionally wanted it that way. And so one of the developers was quoted as saying, you know, like one of his favorite times of like watching uh, beta testers play is like there were some people who were supposed to be allied, but then like one player would start sending planes over the other player's territory. Um, and the, the player who was getting flown over thought that the other player was scouting him for an eventual nuclear attack. So he shot down that, that player's planes, but then that player would, you know, would be chatting with him. They'd start fighting and then like their ships would start getting into combat and naval engagements. And before you know it, the entire alliance has collapsed and they're nuking each other back to the stone age. And that sounds a awesome in terms of gameplay and again, be terrifying. But if you put the terrifying stuff aside for a moment, that sounds like an awesome game to me. So when it comes to DEFCON here, 
Um, this is one of the games found in the book, 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. I I think that, that that's a fair that's a fair recommendation. I think DEF CON here is going to appeal to people who um, come from a board gaming background, who have a couple friends that they want to play with. I think this is more fun with friends than with AI. With AI, you're basically just learning the game, but I think it would quickly get stale. You, what you want to do is find a couple friends who want to sit down and play this game with you, and that's when you can get into these fun alliance quibbles and stuff like that and, and try to actually win. Um, the, the presentation of this game is completely awesome. I love all this random, uh, you know, pseudo 80s vector graphics, you know, green HUD glowing computer screen stuff. Um, I, I think this is a really interesting game. It's a small game. It's smaller than I thought, um, but it reminds me almost of that game Uplink we played a long time ago, which was the hacker game, and that was probably the best presentation of hacking I've ever seen in a video game. I think Uplink has more to it than this. But I think this is a, a tremendously interesting idea for a game. And so it's a nice little fun little game that you can play. Hey, you can play it at work. You know, download it on your work computers, turn it into office mode. It'll take eight hours for a game. Just play it throughout the day here and there with your, your coworkers. You can't lose. So yes, I would definitely say that I think that this is a game that is worth trying um, with some friends. I think you guys could have some fun with it. But hey, that's just my assessment. What do you guys think here of DEF CON? Does it look like a game that you'd enjoy trying? Does it look too terrifying? Uh, for you to ever actually quote unquote enjoy, you know, it is a very sort of dark nihilistic game um, when you get down to it, as I've said repeatedly as I've played through it. Um, but yeah, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, guys, whether you've enjoyed the game or not, hopefully you've enjoyed checking it out with me, and hopefully you've seen something new. If you have, go ahead, like that uh, video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will be back in a few days with a new video, new game. So uh, until then, my friends. Don't start a thermonuclear war, and perhaps more importantly than on any other video of mine, peace. <laughs> Available simulations. Totally a reference to war games. I love it. <laughs>